Hey guys, welcome. My name is Aaron and this is the Wedding Storyteller Podcast. Today we're talking about everything that has to do with Instagram uh, with Dawn from Dawn Photo and how she's built a following, uh, the process and the strategies that she took in order to get there. So let's dive right in. Hey, welcome. I'm super excited that you guys are here today. I've got Dawn with Dawn Photo and she is doing some amazing things. We're going to talk about everything that has to do with Instagram. So Dawn, thank you for hopping on. I am super excited that you said yes. This is one of those podcasts that I believe is going to be super valuable to people. So welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. Awesome. No, we, I am over the moon. Like when you said yes, I was like, yes, this <laughs> is awesome. Um, so can you tell us a little bit about who you are? Like, wh- like give us just a brief story and we'll obviously dive a little bit more into that with the topic today, but just give us an overview of who you are, where did you get started and where you're at now? Sweet. Okay. Well, Hey guys, I am Dawn. I'm an elopement and portrait photographer from Oregon. I've been doing photography full-time for over seven years, which is literally nuts. Um, I kind of just got started just because I like was the shy girl and a camera was in my face so I could be a part of things. It was just kind of my way of like getting involved. And then it just slowly grew and grew into a full-blown business, which is just so nuts to me still. Um, And now I am a mama of a one-year-old little boy. I've got a zoo full of animals. I've got two dogs, two cats. <laughs> I have a husband. We've been married for almost four years. And yeah, just kind of chilling and growing my photography business and grateful for a husband who's a stay-at-home daddy so I can spend as much time with my family as possible. Oh, I love that. And I got to see just some of the pictures and obviously you shared some of that on your Instagram. So you've got a beautiful family and then two dogs. Uh, They're awesome. You guys just got back from a family trip, right? Yeah, we got to go to Central Oregon for the weekend. And I was just, it was so nice. We just went to dog parks the entire time, got coffee. (laughs) Everything was like coffee, go on a walk. Coffee, go on a walk. It was perfect. (laughs) Oh, that's the best. Especially like after working from like, you know, any edits or stuff like that. It's just so nice to get outside. Like every morning just going outside is so refreshing. I love that. And I love that you get to spend time with your family. Uh, and you've created um, a business that allows you to do just that. Um, it's pretty awesome, honestly. Okay. I feel like any photographer that can, or any job that you can kind of create a lifestyle like that, if that's what makes you happy, like try to make it happen for sure. Oh, absolutely. Oh, and by the way, if you don't know this, guys, Dawn is an educator. She's got so many resources for you to start creating that dream job. Um And you can find that over at her website at dawn-photo.com. Is that correct? Yes. Thank you. (laughs) No problem. And um, also, if you're not following her, you need to do so at dawn underscore Underscore. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Perfect. Um, She's like, she's obviously doing this well. She's done um, awesome things. She's got incredible guides there. So like, go check it out. It's going to be so, so much Uh, She adds so much value to um, photographers and business owners alike. So go check her out. Thank you. No problem. Listen, I'm going to plug you in wherever (laughs) I can. We're going to do this and it's going to be awesome, right? So let's dive right in. Let's talk about, we're talking about Instagram. Instagram is so freaking intimidating to people. I I know to me it is. It is to me too. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well when they're changing things from like left and right and like you're like oh my gosh what is how is this gonna affect me right so literally you've you've obviously built a strategy and a following over the years right with instagram you've got around ninety seven thousand followers on your photo page that's insane oh that's my crazy. gosh when um okay no i can dive into so many questions for here <laughs> but i'm gonna just jump into um Like, what is the purpose of Instagram, especially for you? Like, what does that look like and how does that play a role in your business? I feel like the biggest thing with Instagram is like connection, like how I can connect with a potential client, how I can connect with the potential Mm. photographer who wants to like 
be a part of the same community or need support or need education, like that kind of side. Um, it's also just a way to like share your day-to-day -day life and just be a person and like to connect on like a personal brand level, I guess. Um, so for me, it's like a bunch of different things that all comes down to like connecting with people. Yeah, I love that. And I see that you do that so well too, like on your stories, it's like, Dawn at 4 a.m. 4 editing. I'm like, oh, oh good Lord. <laughs> but this is, no, and it, it's like, honestly, like, I feel like I've gotten to know you and your family and your side of the business mm -hmm. through just that. So I love that you kind of hit on how you're using it. Obviously, different people use it for different things, yeah. right? Um, so I'd love to hear your thoughts on, and we're going to dive right in. Uh, I'm here for just it. Just <laughs> give me some, like, what are some of the biggest Instagram things that you felt? Um, no, I'm not going to ask that. Let's go back. <laughs> <laughs> um, how long did it take for you to actually, like, get comfortable with Instagram? Even with the oh, ever-changing, like, things that happen, like, what was the time frame like for you to get to a point where you're like, okay like we're doing this and we're getting the rhythm of this. And obviously I'm like, I'm assuming that you're still continually growing and strategizing Definitely. all of that. But can you give us just a, like, when did it start? When did you start seeing some of this like growth and how did that affect you and your business? Oh gosh. Okay. I feel like growth wise. Oh my gosh. Okay. So I've had, in, I've had like <laughs> this John photo account basically since my freshman year of college, which was when did I graduate college or high school? 2009. So 2009, 2010 ish is how long I've had Instagram. So that's like 12 years. That's just crazy. So my growth was like slow grown for a long time because it was like a personal account that turned into a business account. And then I think maybe like 2016 ish is when I started to see like a jump in it and like started to like you know, I think that's about when I hit like 10 K following and just like, maybe it was 2018. I don't know. It's been a while, but, um, that's when I really started to like push it and kind of see like what I could do with Instagram and how I can market to more potential clients. Um, I think the biggest thing for me to like get comfortable with Instagram was just needing to get past this thing of like posting what everyone else wanted to see from me and not what I mm. wanted to share. And I think that came with like, just like a confidence in my business and a confidence in like my bookings and like kind of where I was. Um, so it just, it took a while to get to that level for me, like to feel confident in myself, I guess. And then to be willing to share anything. And also when stories became a thing, that was so much more fun because then you weren't like just sharing your photos all the time. Like you were able to like share like your personal life through stories and right, then still yeah. share your artwork in like your profile grid, I guess, like in your feed. Um, so just kind of depended, like, I don't know what years these all got thrown into Instagram, <laughs> but whatever years those were, that's when I felt like those like growth years, I guess. Yeah. Oh, that's awesome. So obviously it took a, oh, it took time. And I think yeah. that's another thing that a lot of people need to know. Like it takes time yeah. with anything. And yes, we see these people who are claiming in, you know, six months, I got to a hundred K fall. And that's awesome. And like, if you're putting in the work and you're working at it like day in and day out go for it, <laughs> yeah, for sure. Go for it. But I think people like you and I who have businesses to run, who have mm -hmm. other things that we need to do families, yeah. right. Mm -hmm. That's just not in the cards. And yeah. for most people, so how do you manage creating content and putting out um, stories? You're killing it at stories, uh, obviously. <laughs> like, where do you, how do you integrate that with your life? Because it's not, I don't think it's about finding the time and doing it. It's more like, how do you make that part of your life um, as like your like daily it. routine? Yeah. Right. I feel like that just came with time again. Like, it's kind of just all back to that, like growth and everything. But I noticed that my, like, what's the right word for this? I guess like people's reactions or like engagement really changed when I started sharing like more day-to-day -day life, like me getting up at four in the morning and doing these things or <laughs> spending time with my kiddo or going on trips or stuff like that. People like love to see like what I'm up to, just like how mm -hmm. I am for other people. Like my favorite things to watch are like grocery hauls and travel tips and family time and like coffee shops or like new spots to check out. So 
if those are my favorite things to watch, then why wouldn't I put out what I'm doing? Because maybe other people who want to connect with me find those to be their favorites too. So it's just kind of being like, if I like that stuff, then I should just share that kind of stuff because it makes the most sense. Um, It definitely was not easy to remember to, this is the one thing that sucks is like, you always have to pull your phone out to like take a photo or to capture a video of the moment. And don't get me wrong. My husband can't stand it. He's like, you don't need a photo of everything. You don't need a video of everything. And I'm like, ah, but you do. Like, yeah, at least right? in yes. my mind, I love it because I love to look back on these videos or photo clips of our adventures or day-to-day life. So I'm grateful I have them. He'll eventually get used to it. <laughs> yes. But it's been really just like an adjustment of like reminding myself to, to, to snap that photo or video in the moment. And then I don't typically post it until I have time. So I still have a ton of stuff I want to share from like my past weekend with my family, but Hmm. just haven't had a minute to edit them and put them up there. So whenever I do, it'll be fun, but at least I have them for when I need them. Yeah, no, for sure. That's awesome. So going into the next thing, which is like you finding the time to post it, it, do you use any kind of like scheduling stuff? What, or do you just post on a day-to-day basis? I actually have a social media team and I just hired them in February to help me because I couldn't do it anymore. I was like never posting or I wasn't posting like thoughtfully enough. Like I felt like I was just like posting just to post and it wasn't like putting out the words that like I wanted to share and like that kind of stuff. So my amazing team is so wonderful and they, I plan every photo that goes out. Like I plan the whole like feed post and everything and they we like work together on like what I kind of want to share with each photo. And then they write the caption and I approve things and adjust things as needed. But I don't know what I would do without them. (laughs) (laughs) They're so helpful. And I have so many more projects that are coming out. So I just did not have the time to focus on that as well. If I didn't have the project, I'd probably still be running my social media, but I still do all my stories and respond to everything captions comment or to comments and DMS, but they post it for me and do the caption because I don't have time. Oh, that's awesome. No. Yeah. And because it does take time, like figuring out what these captions could look like and then adding like tagging people and hashtags and all of that. So with with all of that, because Mm -hmm. I know a lot of us like maybe we're at the place where we're just starting out. Right. Yeah. Um, What would you say to somebody who is just starting out as far as like posting? Like what is something that you would say to them? Oh my gosh, so many things. Like so many things. I think, <laughs> right. Okay, first off with like captions, I would just like get a piece of paper out, go on notes, go on somewhere where you can just like jot like a full brain dump of everything you want to share. Like whether mm. it's about the specific client or what that client did at their session that made a difference or what do you want to photograph more or how do you want to challenge yourself more or where do you want to be at? Like kind of like your dreams and wishes and fears, like everything, you know? So kind of like all this stuff, brain dump it all, plan a feed out, whether you use like Unum, Planoly, Later. I actually, my team uses Later. I can't stand that program. So we do it differently. <laughs> they use it still, but I don't go on there. Um, I plan my feed out in this app called Milanote, which is like a note taking app. And I screenshot all my photos and I drag and drop them so I can see my feed because I'm old school and it works for my brain. So I go in there (laughs) and that's how I like to like look at everything. And then we like come together and like, you know, put all the captions with the right photos that kind of fit what the story is, unless it's like talking about the client, of course. But I feel like if you can kind of get an idea of like what you want to share as a photographer, then that's how you can start writing captions instead of like, every day sitting there looking at your phone going to post and you're like what the f do i say with this photo like <laughs> right and that's yeah. when you find like a quote or like this is a great session with a great client we love them <laughs> like right this yeah. doesn't feel natural so try brain dumping as best as you can to get to like the root of what you really want to share oh man yeah i am guilty of the cookie cutter <laughs> caption stuff like what an Same. awesome session right it's like it's just the easiest like go to at that point where i don't have to think about it and i get my 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 content out but yeah. what like i think that becomes kind of boring to whoever is like you know if, if it's a, if right. it's a client right it's like oh i'm gonna check out you know their instagram and it's like uh, very very vaguely the same thing over mm-hmm. and over it's like 
I don't know. It's it's it feels like it could be a little bit of a turnoff at that point. Totally. And there's nothing wrong with that. I've done it. I've done the lyrics. I've done the cute Pinterest quotes. I've done. I've done it all too. I, I've been there. So it's just a matter of like having someone challenge you to like step outside the box and try to really get to like the root of what you want to talk about. So like for me, like I want to talk about education more and like booking more elopement. So like what type of elopement couple do I want to book? What kind of day do I want their day to look like? Like I like couples who have a really chill day where like they might play board games and get ready together and eat pizza on the side of the freaking coast. I don't know, something so chill, like nothing extravagant. That's not my vibe. So that's the kind of stuff we talk about in my captions is like how to have a really unique day to you or like how we can incorporate your personality and Mm. then my photos instead of it talking about the client maybe they're chilling with a charcuterie plate on the side of the beach that's exactly their vibe you know so like that's a unique thing that you could do for your day so that the caption does match the photos but i'm not necessarily like raving about the client i'm just raving about a potential story i could tell so i feel like that's another way to think about it oh i love that so Oh my gosh, these are all super good tips. So what about like standing out visually? Because we've talked about captions and how that can differentiate and coming up and being creative Mm -hmm. with those. But what about visually standing out? Like what are some things that you do? um, I mean, because like I go to your Instagram and it's like visually appealing. Like you've got amazing things. Like all the content that you have is obviously intentional, but yeah. yeah. G- can you give us just a, some tips on that? The biggest thing is like looking at it as like a big picture. So I, for me, like when I look at like the first photo on every like piece of the grid, I guess, like of my profile, I'm trying to find something that matches to the next one or matches within that like nine square or 12 square kind of thing. So I always try to find like a faraway photo, a close up, maybe a darker photo for like a night style. So like I'm constantly like changing the... I, I don't know what the right word is, but like, oh like the man. focal length of yeah, the like layout. my focal length, yeah. I'm like, right. Maybe one is not scenic. Maybe one's really busy. Maybe one's more white space. Maybe one is all blurry. Like, just something to like make that section of my Instagram feed very cohesive in a sense. Like, I won't put two photos. Maybe they'll both be at the beach, but they won't show in the exact same background or both mm. by the water. One will be like beach grass, and one will be beach, you know, or something different. Yeah. Oh man, hearing you say that, I'm thinking about our business Instagram. I'm like, that's so monotone right now. Like medium shots of brides and grooms. And don't get me wrong, like we we love it. But you're right. I never, I didn't think about, you know, creating like different focal lengths for your grid. And it just like, it moves the audience, like whoever's on your Instagram to like, oh, okay, this is another scene. And you're telling a story with your Instagram. I freaking love that. (laughs) Um, Okay. What about reels? Let's move into reels. reels. (laughs) Because reels are one of these things that kind of became super popular, like not too long ago. Yeah. Um, You know, and Instagram has obviously been pushing a lot of reels and promoting these reels. Like, oh man. Okay. The, even creating a reel takes a long time, right? But like, there's, what about, like people that are kind of introverted more kind of to themselves and creating reels can be a pain in the butt. It's so Um, hard. And honestly, I might not seem like it, but I'm like an introvert hardcore. My best friend. Oh my gosh, really? (laughs) Yes. Yes. My my best friend Mackenzie is like crazy wild extroverted and every reel is like one of those like lip syncing silly ones. She's dancing. I'm like, What? I tried one lip syncing one. I think I recorded for like 30 minutes, redoing, redoing, redoing. And I yes, never worked. No, <laughs> not for me. <laughs> it's so <laughs> awkward sometimes, though. It's so awkward, especially as like an introvert or someone who's not comfortable. Like, I mean, I talk on stories. That's fine. But I can re-record that 100 times over. That That's totally fine. Right. Like, right yes. Also, it like goes away in 24 hours. Like reels, they stay there. <laughs> Unless right, you want to delete yes. it, and that's stupid after all that work. So it's just kind of like figuring out what works for you. What works for me is a video of my clients or my photos or mm. something like that. Not typically one of me talking or pointing. I've done those. I feel awkward, but yeah. I feel like the ones that have always worked like that make me feel like confident in posting it is if I'm just sharing like 
what I do as a job, what I see, and then like how it turns out when it's edited. Like, honestly, that's like the only kind I can really put out there. <laughs> no. And I, and that's awesome. Like, again, cause like different personalities can bring different reels to the table. Yeah. So like, you know, same thing for me. It's like, I, I'm not super comfortable with like doing these dances or lip syncing. Right. Cause it's just, it, I feel weird. I feel awkward. Right. So instead like moving into I've, I've been actually sharing some tips, right? Like on our yeah. business Instagram, it's like, Hey, these are some tips that you can do. And it's, Perfect. it feels natural. It feels good. And it's just like, this is me. Right. And I think yeah. staying authentic to who you are oh, yeah. throughout your whole Instagram is probably a bigger deal than actually making Instagram reels or, you know, Instagram stories. But, um, yeah. Is, what would you, is there anything else you would say about that? Oh my gosh. It's just a matter of like finding what fits you again. Like, just like you said, like just being yourself and like being authentic about that. Like, don't feel like you have to do what everyone else is doing with reels. Do not like just, if you can just put yourself out there, just so your client, your potential clients, or if you're an educator, potential photography clients, like that kind of stuff can connect with you. That That's all that matters. Like that you might potentially book a couple or book a session or something whatever is going to connect you to more people is great. And however you do that is great. I feel like. Oh, that's such a good reminder too. Like we're, cause I'm always thinking like, what are, what is so-and-so like going to think of me? Because, and it's just, it's just part of who I am. Like, totally. Right. And it's, like, it's like an artist thing too. Like we're, we're so concerned about that kind of stuff. Like we get really like, Oh, what if they don't like my work or what if they don't like my style or this about me or something like we're very like sensitive, I guess, in that way. Um, yeah, for sure. Yeah. And I'm OK. I've got a confession to make. I did make a reel and like it took me so long to actually like put it out just because after I got done with it, like there was a notebook that in the background that I didn't like that was, and it's like so stupid, no. right? I'm just like, what? Nobody's going to notice that. No one's going to see it. But it's so like, it's such a battle that I'm like always fighting with myself. But, um, and I think people can get to that place where it's like, they're not posting or they're not putting out content or they're not getting on their stories because man, what, like, what are they going to think of me? Who's going to watch this and start to judge me? And I think that's so hard to get past by yeah. like past, you know, that, but what, is that something that you feel like you've ever dealt with and how did you get past it? Oh my gosh, this is so random, but I feel like honestly just like, well, first off, just like getting past it is just like, just trying like constantly. And like, I think stories help a lot with that. Like talking on stories, showing up in stories, like mm -hmm. it's very hard, but something that really helped me to like be more personable and like talk like myself and to like show up with at least my face on camera, um, is this app called Marco Polo. I don't know okay. if you've ever heard of it, but it's like a video chat app. It's like Snapchat, but you can pause it and like fast forward and stuff and like rewatch it. My best friends and I during COVID were always Marco Poloing each other because we like couldn't hang out. And it was like, <laughs> we can't always FaceTime. So it was like our way to like chat. And we just had to like literally hold our phones up and record ourselves talking. So you just kind of got used to it after a while. You stop feeling silly about it anymore. And so now doing it for like Instagram stories or reels is way less intimidating because basically all of 2020, I was recording myself to talk to my friends. So it was just, I feel like it all just connected in a way. It's so weird. Right. Yeah. No. And this is, I think that's perfect. Like, I think you got enough practice to the point where you started to feel way more comfortable. Yeah. And obviously the first time you like do something, you're, it's going to feel weird. It's going to feel mm -hmm. out of place because you've never done it before. Right. Like, yeah. I still remember like the first time I got on the story and actually showed my face. I've never shared my face in the stories. And it's like the first time I was like, I have no clue what to say. Like, I don't know what to do. Like what I do with my hands, right? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like what I do with my hands. Um, but as time went on, it just felt a little bit better. And then it got a little bit better. And then it felt a little bit more comfortable. And it's like, I started to get past these things of like, I don't, I thought, yeah, people might say things, but it doesn't matter. Like I'm creating content and it's yeah. for people who value who I am. Right. Yeah. If they don't so, want to watch it, they can unfollow. Go away. <laughs> yes. Bless. <Right>. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, oh, this is wow. Okay. We've covered a bunch on Instagram. We've covered so many things and like we could keep going because this Instagram is such a like huge thing that people are always asking questions, talking about what are some of the, what are some of the most asked questions that you get when it comes to Instagram? Oh gosh. 
I don't know. I think it just all comes down to like the efficiency kind of stuff, like posting mm. and like showing up. And I feel like those are my most asked questions, I feel like with Instagram. But I mean, obviously I I took the easy way out and I hired a team to help me. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you, when did that, ha- okay, back earlier this year, you said. Yeah, I started that in February. Yeah. So what did you, how was that experience before they came on in, to oh help gosh. you with Instagram? I feel like it was so hard to keep up like with just everything, but I just used um, the Unum app and attempted to like plan my feed out and try to be efficient and try to like set alarms on my phone to post. And it was just, I think once I became a mom, I just kind of realized like what's important to me. And it was for me, like I'd rather spend more time with my family than posting on Instagram. So if I could just like, like this morning, I planned out my next two weeks in my feed with my team. So now for the next two weeks, I don't have to stress out about it. Like it's on them That's kind of a thing. so awesome. So I, if I like, we're going to go hang out with my kiddo and our friends on Friday, like we're have like a plan to go do something where typically I'd be like, oh no, I have to work. So for me, it was just a matter of deciding like what I, like how I can be more efficient and how I can spend more time with my family and like what sacrifices like I had to make. So like clearly I'm paying them. So I have to work harder to make that money, but also means I also can spend more time with my family on other situations. Just that balance, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I love that you value your family, like obviously. Um, but then that time, like trading money to create more time so that you can spend with the people that you love. That's huge. So huge. Um, Yeah. Oh, okay. (laughs) Um, at some point I am going to hire a team for myself because please that, that sounds amazing um no that's awesome is okay i don't think i don't think there's anything else as far as instagram that i i want to hit on for this okay um let's see oh yes one last thing actually i <laughs> totally this one i totally forgot about this one You're good. um do you do any kind of lives and stuff like that for Instagram? Oh, gosh. No, lives freak me out. I think just because there's no <laughs> control over them at all, and I, I can't do that. I don't think I've done a live in over four years. I just, no. Like, no. Okay, no. I Listen, I'm with you because there's no, there's no X button where I can stop it and re-record at that point. <gasps> so it's bad. like... If if my if my kid comes in and like he's butt naked and it's Literally. like live, that's like, oh, gosh, <laughs> Literally. Yeah. No. Lives are not for me. I'm like, I'd rather just like post stories and comment back with people and DM with people. Yes. I love when people like say hi in my DMs and want to like start a conversation. It's like my favorite thing ever. I love talking to them, all that kind of stuff. I think it's so fun just to like get to know more people in the industry or potential clients or anything like that. I think it's so fun. And I, and honestly, like now that you said that, it's so, I love seeing people who have obviously a, a large following that are still, still personable, yeah. still like connecting with people. Cause um, I can't tell you how many times, like, you know, I've reached out to certain people and it's like, like the responses are, like just not there like you know or or, or they just don't right and it's like you know like you said from the beginning instagram is a place where you get to connect with people Mm -hmm. right and it's just like i don't know it just kind of it does something with that trust of that person when you're not able to connect at a real personal level right like yeah um another person i can think of is jai like yeah you know connecting with him is so so different like totally. than anybody would think because he's so down to earth he is like ready to talk to people and i love that about him so 100%. um yeah I it's like awesome i still get people who like when i when they dm me and like i'll respond they're like wait you responded i'm like yeah literally i'm a human like i'm just <laughs> gonna respond to you like i don't view myself as someone who has like a lot of followers because it's taken me like so long to get there so like i don't like try to think about that kind of stuff like Obviously, yes, I know I have a lot of followers, but I try not to think about that when I'm like talking to people or anything like that. Like it doesn't make a difference on the level of photographer we are. Like, you know what I mean? Your level of person we are. It's all we're all the same. So it's just oh, kind of hard. That. Yeah. So yeah, and I love that because like you didn't let that change how you perceive your own self. No. I mean, um, I definitely that's... understand that I like 
worked really hard to get there and it does help right. me book clients. Yes, I'm fully aware of that. I fully get that part of Instagram. But I also just think that there's so much value in just like, like I said, creating connections on social media. There's a lot of people that I follow with a much higher following. And whenever they respond to me, I am just like, oh my God, we're friends. This is so great. This is so awesome. <laughs> I get so excited. So like, it's just such a good feeling to like be able to connect with people like all over this silly little app that we put so right. much stress and anxiety into. And I think it should just like, we need to try to remember like how to make it fun again and like if you're going to post a reel, try not to start out about it. Make it fun. Like, don't worry yeah. about the notebook in the background, like <laughs> that kind of stuff. Yes. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> no, I love that. Oh, this has been so awesome. You've given us some incredible tips. And you talked about um, some of the apps that you use yeah. for Instagram. And I tried to kind of... <laughs> bookmark the you know tag, tag it all here so do you mind just going over what these apps um are one more time yes uh so i use later to plan out my feed i mean the team does i don't um because that app scares me um <laughs> i prefer i like milanote it's like a note-taking app it's my favorite app ever um a lot of people like unum um there's so many good apps. Like the Teza app is great for editing videos. Unfold is great for prepping stuff. I do all my reels in InShot. I think that's what it's called. Yeah. Yeah. So just all the silly little apps to make things more fun. <laughs> no, this, this is gold. Like, cause I honestly just recently started using some of these apps and like resources that are available to us for yeah. honestly for free obviously you can pay for these things as yeah. well but a lot of the free stuff is just incredible and it's oh, like totally go take advantage of it like go build some of these things try them out and find the find the the, the apps and resources that are going to help you create better content um reels and stories and stuff like that um yes. unfold is i love unfold unfold's um, the best <laughs> It's I don't know what I would cheap. do without it. <laughs> oh my gosh, it's twenty dollars a year, I think, something like that. And I it's think. like, like, why not? You're you if you're gonna be posting and using all of this all the time, like for twenty dollars a year, it's like, come on, you four coffees, let's go. <laughs> four whole coffees, yes. right? And not even fancy coffees, just regular no, coffees. That is a regular coffee. I was like, four coffees? That's like way more than twenty dollars. <laughs> <laughs> no, just regular, nothing on it, but. <laughs> Uh, no, this is this is great. Thank you so much for sharing all of this. Like, I really appreciate you hopping on. Like, you've given us so much insight on Instagram, and you made it uh, to a place where it's reach like approachable, right? Without like feeling all the stress and all of the like pressure of it. Like, uh, if you're just getting started, like, go at your own pace. Like, don't stress about little things. Don't find. Don't feel like you have to keep up with so and so just because they're doing that right um 100%. i think oh i think over time you'll you'll start to develop what feels right for you and you'll start to create content that's original and i think people love when you create original content so yeah i feel like that's also going to bring the right people back to you it's like just being yourself and then the people that connect with that that's who you're going to connect with on instagram and it's the best yeah no for sure i love this Don, thank you so much. You've been incredible. Um, oh, I know you had a workshop not to, earlier this month. Yes. And that was amazing. It was a live workshop, right? Is that what yeah, it was? Yeah, it was a content day. It was super fun. Yeah. And you guys got to shoot an elopement. You guys got yeah. to go out in real couples, mm -hmm. like a real vibe, everything. A real day, um, the whole thing. I love that. Is there anything else that is coming out like that or something that we that people can expect from you with that? Um, not more in-person content days just because life is getting really busy, but more really amazing online education is being announced very soon. So we're really excited. Let's go. Okay, I'm super pumped for this. Go follow Dawn at Dawn underscore photo on Instagram or check out her website, um, yeah, you'll find so many resources there, educational stuff, guides. My goodness, I went under your website, guides. I was like, so many just guides. scrolling. I was like, let's go. You put in, obviously, you put in so much work into that. So 
really appreciate that you put content like that for people like us. Um, if you're not following, go ahead and follow the podcast. Um, subscribe to the channel if you're watching. Uh, otherwise, we will see you guys on the next one.